Hello appraisers, this is Brandon with Spark for Appraisers and in this video we're going to be covering another form of regression that we will be using in our adjustment tool. So, so far in this series of videos we've covered ordinary least squares regression, feel sen regression, and least absolute deviation. And these are all so far a form of simple regression, which meaning that we're just solving for one variable. So we have an independent variable and we're using that to try and figure out a dependent variable. And, or in this case, it'd be an adjustment. So we're trying to use maybe GLA and sale price to figure out what a GLA adjustment should be in theory. Those are the mes methods we've covered so far. And today we're going to be covering least median of squares, which is another form of simple regression that we're going to be using. And this is actually very similar to ordinary least squares regression, and they both have least and squares in their name. Really, the primary difference is that in ordinary least squares regression, we are basically averaging the squares, and in least median of squares, instead of averaging them, we're taking the median. It's pretty much that simple. So the formula that you're looking at on the screen here, this is the formula that takes the error and squares it, and then it adds them all up and divides by the total number. Now, there's other variations of this. So this is the formula based on you using regression as if you're doing an entire population. Um, there's things, there's a difference between population and sample, and when we're dealing with samples, instead of using n, we would use something more like a lowercase n. Oops, we'd use something more like a lowercase n and subtract one, and that would be what's called degrees of freedom. And so when you'd use a sample to try and estimate or predict a population, then you use the term lowercase n minus one, which is the total number of the sample minus one. Um, but in our case, just for ease of explaining this, we are just gonna be talking about n, meaning an entire population. And so we're basically summing up everything from our first sale all the way up through the total number of sales we have, which is n, n is the total number of sales, and we subtract from the average of those. So in this example, let's just pretend we're, our independent variable is GLA. And so this would be the GLA of the first sale minus the average of all the GLAs, and we square that. And then we add that to the GLA of the second sale minus the average of all the GLAs squared. And then we add that to the third sale minus the average and fourth and fifth and so on until we go through every sale and square it and add them all up together and then divide by the total amount. And so of course, whenever you add up all the numbers and divide by the total number of numbers, then that you're taking an average. And so what we're doing in least median of squares is essentially something very, very similar to ordinary least squares, but instead of taking the sum and dividing by the total number, we are just taking this for each sale and we're doing the median of that. So we find the median of all of those numbers and that is what we're essentially using in least median of squares instead of the average. So it's pretty straightforward, it's pretty simple, and as you might imagine from what we've been talking about, least median of squares is gonna be more robust to outliers, just like we talked about with feel sen and least absolute deviation. So just to give you an idea here, when we're dealing with averages versus median, and it's just like going to some basic math here, but I just wanted to show you, if you have something like, let's say we have two, three, five, six, and 30. So if we take the average of all of those numbers, and let's just go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna pop open my calculator. We're going to add up those numbers and then divide by the total number, which is five. Then we get 9.2. And so 9.2, would put us right between the six and the 30, like right around here would be where our average is. And it's actually, so our average number would actually be higher than every other number in this set of data other than the outlier here. And we can consider 30 an outlier in that case. Now, instead, if we take 
the median of those numbers, that would put us right here. So instead of nine point something, we'd be at five. And that would actually be right around the dead center of our numbers. So we have five numbers here. The middle one is the third one in, and that's the number five. And so most people would consider this to be better representative of the of this data set, five, and, it, and that the 30 is just kind of throwing the numbers off and making the average show up as nine. And nine would not be like a good, maybe, you could consider it not a good central point for this set of data here. And so essentially what we're saying is this 30 is really affecting the average um, by raising it up from maybe around a five all the way up to a nine and being above every other number in here other than the outlier. Whereas the median is not really affected by that 30. If that 30 was instead a nine, our median would still be five. If that 30 was a hundred, our median would still be five. And so it's really not affected, at not nearly as much, we should say, by an outlier or a couple outliers. So what that means is if we were to go and let's just draw a little chart of data here. Let's say we had some sales right along here and then we had one outlier. And let's say our regression went something like this. And so we look at the residuals and we try and calculate the error, which is the amount from the actual sale price in this case down to the predicted sale price. Like we talked about in our first video, That's, that'd be these lines right here. And if you remember in least squares regression, we are squaring that difference. And so in this one, this outlier right here, because it's so far different, then when you square that number, it actually has a much bigger impact than all these other little numbers. Because you square these and you still get some fairly small numbers, but you square this giant one and you get a really big number that impacts the data. So what that means is in least squares regression or ordinary least squares regression, I should say, more weight is placed on the outliers. They can have a bigger impact on the data. But when we're dealing with least median of squares, then that impact is not nearly as significant. And so we basically get equal weight on all the data points rather than more weight on the ones with the larger error. And so that's an example of how least median of squares is not as affected by outliers. And what we would say is it's robust to outliers. Okay, that is it for this video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.